So what's up everyone and welcome back to the channel. Welcome to a very beautiful morning here in East Texas. Today we're going to do a little experiment and it's not just today that we've been doing it. It's been for the past two months. In this paddock here, this is what I like to call the permanent paddock. It's where our corrals are and where, you know, kind of the paddock that our barn's attached to. That if you guys have been following the videos for any length of time, this is where we bring all the new animals into. Well, this paddock here has been resting has been resting for 60 days. No animals have been on it. It's just been growing up for the past 60 days. And to give you some context, this is springtime. This is the middle of springtime. This is Cinco de Mayo. So it just gives you some context about where we are at in the growing season, okay? And the way we're gonna do this is with my handy dandy tape measure. So we're gonna go through and take some measurements of different places around this pasture and then one that's been rested for 30 days to see okay is it worth it to let it rest for 60 or is it worth it to only do 30. Let's go check it out. So as you can see this pasture is very much ready to be grazed. It's very much up okay and we're gonna go see like there's places like right here. This is where I can guarantee you there's a manure pat in the middle of it. What we're gonna do is take our tape measure and kind of guesstimate. And we are at about 28 inches. Some of these can go up to about 32. So about a two, two and a half feet. That's in the, the best areas, okay? Now, in, uh, uh, this is kind of under a tree, so we won't do right there. We'll kind of go in the areas where it's not surrounded by a manure pad. Look at the, the this is the Bahia here. We're looking at about 22 inches-ish. Okay, it's hard to do with the wind. Okay, so we're at 32 around a manure pat at the peak at its top, like this would be right here. We're directly on top of a manure, manure pat. See, so you, you look at that one, this guy right here, that's about 30, if I put that straight, that's about 32 inches. Okay, so that's what we're, that's the peak. That's the peak, but the average will go right around here. And we'll see it's probably it we're right around two feet tall so about almost three feet two and uh, three quarters at its peak and the average is about two feet tall so now we're gonna go to an area where it hasn't been grazed in 30 days in 30 days so theoretically everything should be cut in half right well let's see let's see I think I know the answer to this I don't know the answer for sure but we'll find out so this area right here next to the corrals this is uh, where we had our llamas when we uh, kind of separated them out. We've let this rest for, it's exactly 30 days today, which is pretty cool. So we can get an exact measurement. Look at this. Now this is in a little bit of a wet area, so maybe that has, you know, some of a disadvantage. And th that one right there, that leaf, that Bahia grass leaf is at 32 inches. Let's go over here. Let's see. A normal one okay okay we're right about here we're looking at that one about 26 27 inches tall now this is the Bahia has only been up for a little while but you look at I think this is ryegrass I'm pretty sure the ryegrass is at about 14 or 15 inches that's the same as the other paddock actually let's go make sure Okay, back here at the ryegrass. Let's let's go to a real thick patch, right here. <laughs> 12 to 14. This is this is about 12, 13 inches. Okay, let's go to the taller one. There's a 14, 15. So in reality, the grass growth is about the same. It's about the same in both paddocks. One that hasn't been grazed in 30 days, and then one that hasn't been grazed in 60 days. But which one is more productive? Obviously the one that hasn't been grazed in 30 days, why? Because it actually doubles the production. You see, there's all these people out there that want to take animals off the land. Say, oh, they're, they're, they're terrible for it, you know, we don't need them anymore. You know, we can have all these soy burgers and fake stuff and yada, yada, yada. It's so bad, it's so bad. No, taking animals off the land is the worst thing in the world, in the world. Why? Because it's about all about carbon to these people, all about carbon, it's all about, all about carbon. No, it's not about really how much carbon we admit that can play a factor, okay? 
you know, I'm not gonna say the, the amount of carbon that we're emitting from all this other stuff is okay. I'm gonna pull back on that. But it's about as, but what it's about is how much carbon that we can capture. I mean, hello, if you really care about the planet, if you really care about the planet, then you do things this way. If you really care about your pocketbook like Mr. Bill Gates, do things the other way and have everybody eat, you know, Monsanto soy burgers and all this other junk that they're trying to convince us to eat. Because I can tell you, no scientist, no nothing, and even the smartest person in the world cannot compete with them. Why? Because they're what nature created on its own. No human intervention. They did it on their own. Nature did it on its own. It created the herbivore for a reason. That's to be nature's pruner. That's to be nature's gardener. And be able to refertilize. Refertilize the pastures. Refertilize our grasslands. Refertilize our, you know, kind of gone, basically gone, civil pastures. That's really what the, the United States look like. You know, when you go drive and you see all these woods and stuff, that's not what native woods look like. No, why? Because that's what happens when you pull animals off the land. Go look at the ground floor. There's nothing there. It's supposed to be kind of like this over here. Look at this. It looks like a park. This looks like, this is a true silvo pasture, you know, in a small little area that, you know, we got lucky enough that the previous owners did a very good job taking care of it. And this is what they created, is a silvo pasture. What is a silvo pasture? It's a mix of grasses and trees. This is what the forest used to look like. Maybe not up in the mountains or anything like that because it's just too steep for animals to get to. Again, animals not on it, they grow up too dense and it becomes unproductive. This right here is what it's supposed to look like. A mixture of grasses and trees not all just trees because you go into the deep forest the deep woods that's not productive there there's nothing growing there's barely any food that's why it's like 70 to 90 percent of all life live on the fringes okay you go to where two different types of ecosystems meet you go to where grasslands and forests eat 10 feet in the forest 10 feet in the grassland that's where most of the life's going to be why because the cows who like the grassland are going to go to the forest and go to the shade. The deer, the bunnies and everything that need the forest for protection, they come to the grasslands to eat. But when you have a mix, everybody wins. When you go to the rivers, the ponds, the streams, any kind of body of water, guess what? The, the water, even the oceans, even the oceans, okay? Down, out in the deep, deep ocean, there's some animals. But the majority of life is right, you know within for sure 10 miles of the shoreline. Why? Because that's where all the nutrients are. That's where, you know, the shallower waters, that's where the warmer waters are. And guess what? That's where the birds hang out. That's where the fish hang out. That's where the people like to hang out with the beach. That's where the life is. It's not out in the deep oceans. It's not out in the deep forests. It's not even really out in the deep pastures. Why? Because if you just have grassland, if you just have complete grassland, no trees, no nothing, you're not gonna have any birds. Why? Because a bird will only fly 200 yards from a tree. It's not gonna go out and fly for forever unless it's migrating it's the only only condition but if you want birds on your place and you don't have any trees add some trees and guess what the birds will appear why because they will only fly 200 yards 200 yards any direction from a tree if it's out in the middle of the open no it's no if it's out in the middle of the open no it's not going to go there that's why like all these farmers that have these big fields of corn or soybeans or whatever right they need to have all the pesticides and herbicides and everything why because the insects can thrive out there they can go thrive on the stuff that they like to eat the corn the soybeans the crops you know that kind of thing and they don't have their natural predator why because when you have these big open fields the birds aren't going to go to the middle of the open fields why 200 yards 200 yards remember that so what does that mean it means that the insects are going to take over They're, it's a monoculture so if they like you know the, that particular corn stalk guess what they're going to like the next 10,000 in the way it's all about keeping things in balance and right now the way that we farm doesn't keep things in balance this right here this right here keeps things in balance why because 60 days 30 days keep it mowed at 30 days and you'll have the same production at 60. If you wanna grow more grass, you don't let it grow longer. You cut it when it's in its growth stage. You see, grow, you see grass, grass in particular, has, it grows like an S-curve. So it takes a little bit for it to get started, okay? Because it takes you know time to germinate, and it's the hardest part, it's putting down its roots. Then it goes into explosion growth phase, okay? And that's when you wanna graze it off, okay? Because if you don't graze it off then, then it goes into this, the way the grass is over here, into like, the, the old grass. I know you want to move. I'm going to move them in a second. To where it peaks. It peaks. It's not going to grow anymore. Why? Because it fully expressed itself. If you can keep it in that growth stage, graze it off, 
keep it there it'll come back faster it'll grow more and you're gonna grow more grass so the people that say it doesn't work yes it does and the way to keep it as productive as possible is to move these animals and which we're gonna do right now and today's gonna be a little bit of an interesting move because yesterday we had our uh, surprise calf out of nowhere completely out of nowhere get born the heifer that we bought came bred and we got kind of a freebie we got a lucky one so it was May the 4th yesterday, so we kept with the theme and we named it Skywalker. A little bull calf is named Skywalker. But this is gonna be its first move. This is gonna be its first move because I can't leave it here because they're going into this permanent paddock where I was showing you. So I have to go and uh, figure out will Mama, who's back there probably with the calf, I haven't found it this morning just yet, but I have to go and move them all into here and will, will the calf follow Mama or will Mamba bring the calf? What I might have to do is I actually might have to go and uh, get all the cows in to the new paddock and then uh, go get and then go pick up the calf and bring it to Mama. So it's over here and you know they're not separated by this fence because this is where they're going to be today. But before I do that, I have to go and do a few things uh, to secure it like close the gates because we don't want them running around and getting into the grass that we don't want them at. Why? Keep it as productive as possible. Now before we move the cows, I also want to clear one thing up too. In the summertime, would this timing be the same? No, I would be probably 60 and 120 days that we'd have to do this on because it, you know, it's called the summer slump. This grass slows down to a degree. So would this be able to work in the summertime as well as, as far as the same time frame? No, no, so it'd be longer, but like I said, we're, this is May 5th, so that gives you some context. This is springtime. So in the springtime, you want to move the animals faster. In the summertime, you want to slow them down. Why? Because the grass grows a lot slower. In the fall, yeah, you know what? Depending on where you're at, depending on the, the temperatures, you might want to either speed them back up or slow them even down further. Now the question is, will mama and baby come? I don't know. We're going to see. This will be interesting. First time doing a cattle move with a newborn baby calf. So this will be fun. Yeah, they didn't come. So mama and baby are still over there. The baby's up nursing right now. So I'm gonna try and go herd them and see how it goes. We'll, we'll see, this is gonna be an experiment. Oh, she's coming. Come on, cows. There she goes. Come on, cow, cow, come on. The cows are all settled into the corrals in our permanent paddock area. And now, we're gonna do a little experiment with this right here. It's the other half of the 55 gallon uh, drum that I cut for one of their, the cow's water troughs. And I saw this experiment on Greg Judy's channel and I think he said that he got it from Alan Savory. And I wanna prove a point because, you know, I saw what happened there and saw what happened with both of theirs, uh, these experiments that happened, but I wanna do it here just so I can see with my own eyes. This right here, I'm gonna put this right down over here. Let me see if I can tilt the camera down a little bit more. Right over, right over here. I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna make a mark right there. This, that area right there is now called the exclusion zone. In that little what? About what, two feet by two feet little circle no animal no human no nothing is gonna get in there for the next five six seven eight nine ten years why because I'm proving a point when you remove animals from the land we're gonna see what happens we're gonna see what grows up in that circle it's see-through or it'll, it'll allow light through so that's not gonna be the issue at all but right there 
We're not touching it. We're not touching it because everybody says, oh, you got to get the animals off the land. Oh, they're, they're wreaking havoc on everything. We're going to see what happens if you do that in just that little circle. I'm not going to do any more than that because I'm not wasting any, of my, any more of my farm in order to prove a point. That right there, we're going to be doing tours here and everything later on. So when people come out, we're going to show them what's going to grow there. What's going to grow there compared, you're going to, we're going to show them there and then we're going to show them the pasture huge difference we're not going to string trim it we're not going to mow it we're not going to do nothing to it absolutely zero and we're going to see what grows up in that little area and i'm going to tell you right now if you want to follow along great would love to, for you to see it in two three four five years the answer is nothing it's gonna it's gonna grow up what's gonna be there is gonna die and then it's gonna just be so thick that nothing else is gonna grow up through it and guess what the, that area that dirt or all the microbes in that area are going to end up dying. It's going to be sad because that's what you do when you take animals off the land. You kill it. Hey, look who it is. It's Mama. Where's your calf, huh? Where's the, where's Skywalker? He's hidden somewhere in there just because, you know, she needs to go eat. And that's kind of like daycare for uh, little calves. Go put them in the tall grass somewhere. <laughs> Pretty cool. So in order to see more videos like this and to see what happens in that exclusion zone and to see some of the experiments that we're just messing around with around the farm, hit that subscribe button down below, ring the notification bell so you get notified when we put up new videos. Hit the like button because it really does help with the YouTube algorithm. It gets us more exposure. And drop a comment if you like. All right, until next time, see ya.